Hey there, card folk. Speed Robo here. And today we have another episode of Blitz Brawl. On the blue side, playing Aurelia is Caird. And down on red, bringing his signature Argog strategy is Rat. Joining me on commentary is No Have Name I Want, more commonly known as Patrick. How you doing, pal? I've been doing good. Uh, it's been a nice day. Yeah, time for some Legacies of Lyric. As it always is on a beautiful late summer day, we are kicking the drafting phase off right now. And as most viewers at home will know, Blitz is exactly the same as Draft, except you only bring 80 gold. This makes it a much faster format, but with slightly limited strategy. Uh, normally, in a, a normal draft, you have twice the amount of gold, so you can have much more flexible units, units for much more uh, specific situations, but in Blitz, you usually have to find broad, broader strategies yep. to deal with more threats. You gotta bring more tech in your army, not just the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And one thing we're showing so, right off the uh, right out of the gate is uh, both players are drafting their equipment and abilities immediately. No reason to keep that secret. Might as well just bring them out right now. And can you give me a little bit of analysis on these two hero builds? I uh, uh, sure thing. So first, uh, Cared, the Aurelia player. She's doing something that a lot of people like to call Heavy Knight Aurelia, where she brings Worm Scale Mail and a sword, and she gets Heavy Knight stats. And then you just slap stuff on her, and then call it a day. And then uh, Rat is playing what he likes to call Speedy Arga. That makes sense to me. Uh, also, Reflexes has been selected, giving Argog Counter-Strike. And it looks like Aurelia is bringing a few of her Spellcaster tools as well, with Solar Aegis to prevent attacks, and Sunstrike 2 to deal some magical damage. Indeed. Uh, magic damage doesn't seem like it's going to be doing a whole lot. Uh, there's no armor or anything on the other side, but just giving her charging is pretty nice. Yep. And now we're seeing some units coming down on both sides as well. The standard spellcaster package for Gath is here. Two Vesuvian Warlocks for debuffing and heal negation, and a Troll Doctor to remove debuffs that Erangard may be placing. Uh, doesn't look like Erangard's bringing any debuffs though, so that Troll Doctor will primarily just be used for healing. Over on the Erangard side, we've got a Priest right in the Priest spot that, uh, E7 Hex is uh, typically where we see those pieces get put. And uh, Crossbowman, as well as Dawnbringer Paladin. Dawnbringer Paladin is a really cool unit, in my opinion. It's got the ability to prevent itself from being attacked for two rounds, as well as dealing splash damage. Lots of things you can do with this guy. I'd also like to point out there's three Vesuvian Walla, not two. There's Wait, there's a third. a third? There is a third Heidi down here. I, huh. Uh, what's going on with that? Yeah. People have to think about what, it, what to remove, the root or the burn. Most people are going to remove the burn, because, or the root, sorry, because a rooted unit can't do anything. So just a little bit of extra splash damage. Only five gold, though it's not incredibly expensive. And of course, he does have decent combat stats for a support unit. So people have just realized the uh, Warlock's been pretty good and was as of late. That makes sense to me. Uh, in addition, with the three Warlocks, theoretically, um, all three of uh, the primary spellcasters, the two priests, and Aurelia can get silenced with uh, no real counterplay to that, if these Warlocks are positioned correctly. Uh, something else to point out it's the Vesuvian Warlock's Overheat, his second ability, also prevents units from being buffed. Meaning, you can prevent a unit from being Solar Aegis. I also think it prevents Dombringer from getting his Can't Be Attacked. Oh my goodness, you're right, it does. Yeah, so oh, you can... Oh, that could be big. So you can prevent, you can 
just pre overheat a paladin and then force the priest to remove it. Otherwise, when the paladin goes in, he just doesn't get the buff. And of course, he has more warlocks than he has priests, so he can easily force one to stick. And it looks like for the rest of Gas List, it's just nice bread and butter, very staple units. I like Goblin Lackey too. He, he has so much versatility. He's a buffering unit, he's a healer, and if need be, he can charge and actually do something. Yeah, what do you think the lore reason is for him dying and then healing one? Or should we just not think about that? Ah! <laughs> my, my thought was always the bigger things eat him. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, like, Hellbear, like, eats the lackey or something. Like, I don't know, that's just something I thought about. That, that, that seems like a gaff thing to do, honestly. Can you imagine an Eric oh, Kerr really unit eat. with that ability? That'd be really <laughs> funny. Although I really don't see how smaller units like a Goblin Archer would eat a lackey, but I'm not judging. <laughs> That's a really funny image. <laughs> That's just, it's just him, but not wearing the hat and just like, eat me to heal one. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then as for the Aaron Guard list, looks like it's a bit more of a more bread and butter thing. There are two crossbows, a bit more aggressive placements for crossbows. Usually they're seen in the pockets and. Uh, C6, E6? Yeah, that's really aggressive crossbow positioning, but I mean, I, I think it could work out. One thing that I do like is I, I like the longbow archers. I'm just always a fan of that. Always love seeing those guys. I kind of think put them in the same scope of like knight, but just, you know, knights I think are just very solid charging units that can take a hit. Yep. And archers are just, hey, they poke at the enemy. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. And that's the Aaron Guard in general, is like, they have just solid stuff. Just good stuff. That's Aaron Solid Guard. units. Yep. You can put any unit in an Aaron Guard list into any list, and it'll, it'll work. I like this spot for the Dragon Hatchling immediately threatening the Crossbowman. That's, uh, that's pretty good, because Dragon <laughs> Hatchling can go one, two, three, and then Flame Breath that crossbowman out for the two damage that seems pretty good to me don't know how he's gonna rat is going first if he really wanted to he can hatchling him dead turn one. Oh, that's right yeah because uh rat is the attacker in this game yes. so that and if if he doesn't, though, he can put a shield on the crossbowman and keep him alive, but I feel like he'd want to put the shields on the longbow archers to protect them from the well, warg archers. I don't actually know if I would put the shield on the longbow archer here. Um, nothing can really threaten it except for that dragon hatchling. Honestly, I would shield, if, if I were to shield anything, it would be Spellbreaker. And the reason why is because it has four health. And pretty much, and Argog here has four damage. Another thing to point out is Hellbear having the roar ability. He does have a pretty scary late game scenario if it's just the paladins against the bear. That is definitely something that Carrot is going to have to watch out for. Uh, keep an eye on that Hellbear. It's sort of an alternate win condition at this point. Yeah, and even Roar, the Paladin, even yep. if he's Solar Aegis, making him... It's usually the Paladins, you use Solar Aegis and then get into position, so that they can then wag at something the next round. Yep. But uh, forcing, having the bear force them to move means they have to then use the Aegis again. Yeah, there's not a lot of charging. And I think Angel <laughs> is also a very questionable pick here um not many things that can resurrect except for the crossbowman well there's the priest there's the crossbowman you can get another shield bearer uh -huh. I don't know. yeah you might just have it as a shield 
engine. That would make um, more sense than focusing on the resurrect. Like, yeah, just have it around for shields. Because you give paladins eight health, and now they're a lot scarier. Trying to figure out where he wants to draft those archers. You don't want to put them in the wrong spot because otherwise Aurelia is going to come in and just kill them if you're not careful. Yep, that is true. She does have four power thanks to that crystal sword. We do have a spell cradle seraph. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. Well, he has a couple options. Uh, there's buffing the paladin to make it deal an extra damage to something. Yeah, one thing to keep in mind, though, is with um, spell power, it's only going to do plus one damage to the first unit that gets hit with the magic damage. And there's also Aurelia with Sunstrike. Oh, that makes sense. Essentially, he has a four damage threat because if the Paladin just runs up and uses uh, Sunburst on the War Archer, yep. uh, it's essentially forcing Rat to heal it. Otherwise, Aurelia can... Well, assuming that Aurelia already has the spell power buff, he can then threaten to just sun strike the Warg Archer and kill it. Where's this last Warlock gonna go? We haven't figured that out yet. Oh, maybe the last pocket in G2. Ooh, I like that spot. Is a little safe there, because... Oh, crazy idea. Absolutely madness. You slap that boy on D2. What threatens it? Oh, you can uh, you can kill a kill a priest. Yeah, and nothing threatens it there. You either you either kill a priest or force the one priest to save the other priest. Yeah, I actually really like I really like D two for that warlock. Makes sense. I'd slap that right there. Also, having Argog in the pocket is actually not a bad idea. I've played against this a couple times, and he's still able to hit everything. Well, he wants especially to hit. when you've got your um, super nasty plus one movement, because even if you're in the pocket, if you're Argog, if you're here, one, two, three, and then you can hit Paladin or Crossbowman or whatever's in the other pocket for four damage right there. So, what's Rat's first move going to be? Hit me with that analysis. Patrick, what are you smelling? There are a couple options. One is obviously the hatchling killing a crossbowman. Uh, there's also Warg Archer Ooh, Warg killed Archer, crossbowman. Yep. crossbowman. I would prefer the hatchling actually, because Warg I would or Warg Archer is a bit better than the late game. Well, hear me out. What actually threatens Warg Archer? Nothing. Uh, nothing. So, exactly. Uh, Air's list is pretty slow. Well, there is the archer, actually. So, that's one day. Archer, archer, plus one power relia kills the work archer. Oh, right, with the sun strike. That, but that takes a lot, which means Troll Doctor could theoretically heal that if it gets into range. Right? It does, that right would have to be a pretty forward moving. And then heal that. Or the other thing you can do is you can use your Warlock right now to debuff um, the Aurelia to silence that. And then you're you're all great. So uh, just to recap, Crossbowman ran up, pinged for one, and then Goblin Lackey captured. That yeah, I think he wanted to get value out of the Crossbowman because I think he He saw... realized that Crossbowman was going to die no matter what, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm guessing it's a silence on Angel. And that pretty decent Dawnbringer spot. He goes to what is that C4? Yeah, that's pretty good. And the Warlock and the Archer hits them both. There's one threatens both of them actually with the Sunshade. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm just gonna decide to shield the priest. I don't know about shielding the priest. The shielding actually. the priest, I think, is a mistake because there's the only thing that deals one damage in this entire army really is Goblin Archer here and here. Goblin Archer, and I guess there's a threat, but... Ugh, not really. Like, everything else deals yeah, two damage. Like, everything else, actually, yeah, the Warlocks are out of range now. Honestly, if I was yeah, a Warlock, just I silence the, the Aurelia, yeah. 
I think he's gonna silence the priest. Silence priest? Yeah, that's pretty good. Silence priest. Ah, that's even better, Sun Burst. That's, yeah. Burning two of the warlocks. That was pretty good for Care. Yeah, that's on. Yeah, now if, uh, if the warlock wants to silence anything, he'd ask to move up in range. Well, no. Uh, Vesuvian warlock uh, here can just move to G2. And then it's got four range. I guess the silence. Oh, yeah. Or it could silence nice. the Dawn Brainer. Act. Got a Ruta really instead. Yeah, Root and Burn. That seems pretty good. Um, yeah. Fortunately, I do think it is going to be. I don't think Aurelia needs to move, though. She can just sit yeah. there and just be a Sunstrike. She has plenty of uses. Is it two? It's about. Two uses of Sunstrike I'd say she'd be comfortable with before she wants to like use Sun Forever and Solar Aegis. Right. I, I mean, there's at least two Sun Strikes that she could throw Never out here. Good. And that's yeah, uh, and that's a Vesuvian Oof. Warlock already toast. That's why I don't. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I don't know about. I kind. I, I'm gonna be honest. I really liked silencing the Dawnbringer Paladin just to try and prevent that from happening. Oh, he's going in. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's right. I forgot Argog has four movement because of Boots of Speed. Okay. He's, yeah. he's safe here. Wait, is he? Hold on. No, uh, let's see. That's seven health, and that's one from Lawnbow Archer. Yeah. And he can't get a Sun Strike off. Maybe if Priest removes the root. Right? The root, but. Then Aurelia can deal four four damage, so that's five damage thus far. And that's it, it's only five damage. That Argog is safe. You would have to force going first. Oh, and Omni Slash. Oh. Yeah, this is this is the big thing a lot of people miss about Speedy Argog is that it's really just to get in for an Omni Slash. That was... Okay, I do I wonder how... I take it back. Sacking that Warlock was absolutely worth it to get rid of the Dawnbreener Paladins. Just get those Dawnbreeners out of the house with some juicy setups, and then Argog just comes in and plays. <laughs> that was honestly a next-level gambit. Really well thought out by Rat. You might be thinking about dealing big damage to the yeah. Paladin. I kind of like it. Just get a Music. bunch of damage set up on that paladin. He is in a tight, tight spot, actually, because there's two warg archers that can just shoot him. There's a hellbear there. You can even set up another lackey to charge into it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that paladin's pretty much toast. Oh my God. He might decide to just push forward, except that his archers are going to die. Maybe that one priest. And just move push forward and try and deal yeah. with the rest of Rat's yeah. army. I think just letting this archer, just letting this little cluster here die to an Omni Slash and just jamming everything else into that sort of like midline. Because right now, uh, Karad does have all of the wargs just dead with a Seraph buff and to a Sunstrike, and then he can position to maybe charge into another war. Angel late game is also pretty nice. Deciding to protect the Troll warlock. Doctor healing Warlock is something I actually don't agree with. I don't think that was correct because this Warlock can just die to an array no. charge anyway. Just deciding to sun strike regularly? I don't see anything else that say if we want to buff. And I mean, just buffing the Aurelia does just say... Oh, oh, one okay, of the so check this out. Hecbear roars Dawnbreener to D2. Then Hatchling can still deal the two damage to Dawnbreener and then move away from Dawnbreener. Actually, yeah. That's pretty neat. Okay, or we're going to roar that one. No, no. You know, you know what I think... 
Oh, I think oh. this warg archer comes. This might in, be a deals two damage to Rail. Well, oh, one it's, I think this is a misplay. Yeah, I think Rat forgot about Worm Scale. I think that's what he's saying. Yeah. He might want to. He might be shooting the archer and then having Argog attempt to charge Aurelia and then realize she has the armor and the hell, extra health. Yeah. I don't know. I still like my Dawnbreener Paladin move to D2, Dragon Hatchling, Breathe Fire, and then keep it safe. I think that's a great move too because then you can threaten the priest. You can move to C4. Ooh, yeah. And then that threaten to move the... right here, which then means and the six for priest. one, two, three, and then kill priest. That would have been really neat. Huh. Mm -hmm. I think I think my suspicion might have been correct. He might be forgetting about worm scale. Yeah. He's gonna, he's gonna attempt to charge Rilla to realize that doesn't work. He's gonna realize, oh man. Because you also have longbow archer shooting the war archer, or even just the priest healing mm -hmm. the dombringer as like a as a move they can. Maybe you just put the shields on Aurelia and the Angel, maybe. Or the Dawnbringer. Skip with Angel. Yeah, because now Dragon Hatchling comes in, deals two to Angel, and that sets up for an Argog Angel. kill. Skip. Angel can revive something. Well, not if it dies to Argog. Well, if he's going first. Right now, he is going right. first. He is going first at this point. I don't know what he would revive. I mean, there, I guess, a crossbowman, but that doesn't help. Like, I don't, I don't see that. Maybe helping. he just repositions and shields something. Oh, uh, weird play. Goblin lackey sacks itself. Plus one power to archer. Archer moves in, kills shield bearer for the lulls. I mean, it's not a bad move, honestly. Seems like you're trading two gold you get, for you three. Get, you take an action. You take yeah. an action. Trading two gold for three, steal an action. I'm into it. When you're up, you want to do trades like that. I mean, when you're gaffed, you want to take trades like that anyway. Yeah, exactly, because you, you don't have anything else going for you. Gaff looks at units, it's like, why are you not dying like you're supposed to die wait this unit's alive to hurt the enemy not for long <laughs> that's for both sides of the board too <laughs> yeah yeah helpers looking at this helper is really scary for yeah this bear, bear because kind of the hell bear it. just can just hit anything when it's like exhausted already and that's five damage yeah that's essentially anything that's essentially saying something bad yeah because of the burn too that's Potentially even six damage, which is kind of nuts. So, Parrot has a lot of options here. There's a lot of hanging pieces on both sides here. There's a lot of things that can happen. Um, yeah. I think the big thing was the uh, Spellbreaker drop last round. That's a lot of value just going Yeah, it looks like Carrot's is probably going to be or a paladin. I just saw this, but there's the paladin yeah. on D3. Argak can take that as well. Wait, we're Solar Solar Agus, Solar Agus the Priest. Uh, well, then that means your angel dies. I think Dombringer. Ooh, this Dombringer. is pretty good, though. Yeah, I was going to actually say C4 because it takes out a warlock and then. C4 is Damn, good. So this, kill, this kills a unit. I'm, I'm going to be honest, uh, E5 would have definitely been my favorite, especially if Argog was still there. Because that would have brought him down to 5 health. Yeah. That would have been incredibly good. The important thing here is getting honestly getting Argog down to 4 health so that Aurelia or the Paladins can kill him. I don't know, Paladin oh, stuff. Maybe Char... Maybe Paladin just takes Warlock? I have no idea. 
silence the other priest, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna check something. You actually could have just had the wood guard to shoot the priest. Oh, he's silencing that priest. <laughs> yeah, that's really mean. Yeah, I think he needs to heal with that priest next to Argog, mm. because Warg Archer does have a way of killing it. Yeah. Well, Dragon Hatchling also. Plus one. Oh, okay, yeah. Plus one spell power on Dawnbringer Paladin. That uh, makes I sense. Think he kills two units, uh. yeah. The Lackey, yeah. and then he can either decide the Warlock or the yeah. Rider. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know about moving Seraph there, that just means the... That just... Yeah, the Archer can just stand still now and shoot it. Yeah, yo, yeah, Archer doesn't even have to move, just... Whack. Root the Paladin? Oh, Root Paladin would be... Very... I mean, he can just still, he can still Sunburst, and he still kills the Warg Rider and the Lackey. Yeah. Silence is probably better. Because now, because now the... Warlock is just reduced down to silence. The only thing that's really way silencing is because I guess Aurelia. Uh, that priest has to do something right now. Yeah, remove the other debuff. Yeah. Only real option it had. I guess there was heal the other paladin, but... No, no, not. No, uh, still gets murdered, oh, yeah. Oh, and then magic damage through on the priest. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Got an yeah, I think he was trying. I think he was trying to remove the root on the paladin. Yeah, which makes sense. I still think you. You sunburst. Or you kill the. No, warrior. the paladin's silenced. Oh, he's silenced. Mm-hmm. Oh, he is silenced. Uh, that's what he's trying to do. Which I mean, removing the silence. Uh, also, like, yeah, it makes sense. I will say, Aurelia and the two paladins still being here. There's still a threat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, Rat can't get too comfortable. Really? I think, honestly, it really just depends on getting them everything down to trying to keep everything down to four health. Charging into. That seems yep. good. Paladins protecting Aurelia from the bear. Warg Archer can only come in and deal two damage. Can do three if you did the lackey. Yeah, three at most with lackey. Well, I guess if you if the lackey buffs the Warg Rider, Paladin. I think the war the Paladin just hits the Warg Rider anyway. Yeah, at this point, I think Paladin just takes that off the board. I think that Paladin Archer shoots the... Yeah, position. Yeah, I can't yeah, no, attack. I still, uh, I mean, you move him to C... Take the shield bearer. I move it to C5, and you can still kill the shield bearer. Use the bomb for two damage? I think that's smart. Rat still does have some healing, though. He can heal up the Hellbear if need be. Yeah, I think he still gets shot by it. Yeah, he gets that squared away. Yeah, I would have moved one more to the right. Yeah, I like uh, C5 a little C5, bit more. C5, because then he can shoot all three of his units in that move. Hmm? Why not take this out? I think he was oh, trying to take. I think you're trying the, to get rid of the bear. Will kill. Yeah, I think you want to get rid of hell. Uh, get away from hell bear. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Doesn't I think here the archer wolf... shoot for one. Dawnbringer has three health left. War Rider take. Yeah. Yeah, that does do it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Another thing to consider is that. You, another scenario you could do is the Warg Rider and the Goblin Archer kill the two units on the top right. Get even more actions. Is that Paladin's not doing anything? He's kind of just stuck there. 
Mm, I want to kill the paladin though. Yes. Yeah, and Rad agrees with me. Yes. I like kill paladin. Seems good. Yes. Saving his heals for Argo, I, I uh, presume. Yeah, uh, I think that's a reasonable play. If you lose the War Grider at this point, uh, who cares? I like that. Rat still does have a silence. Oh. There's one more silence. Oh, yeah. And there's... Now the priests are dead. He no might be forcing his... This one. This spell card. And there goes the last paladin. I think this is pretty much closed out for Rat at this point. I'm not sure Carrot can do a whole lot to come back. Yeah. He's gonna have to find some kind of. Hellbear sitting in the middle does prevent yeah, a real. Hellbear in middle. That is that is rough. Yeah, you need especially with the full health drill doctor. He can just steal any chip damage the Hellbear gets. Yeah, it's a problem. Our Gog being within out of kill range also hurts. Yeah, and at this point, I would have Goblin Lackey just immediately heal that bear. You're so far up on actions that it doesn't matter, and this is going to prevent the Sunstrike from coming in. Just silence, Aurelia. Yeah, silence, uh, that'll do it too. Yeah. And then now just I block think... up center. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, Aaron's going to be down a couple units. The War Archer is going to take the regular Archer. The Goblin Archer is going to kill Cradle, presumably. Probably by the end of this round, uh, we're only going to see Aurelia left on the board. And then Argog and the Bear, I think, will just uh, clean that up for us. Silence the right. Oh well, yeah, because Sun Fervor is a passive, so... Yeah, Sun Fervor is a passive, so you can still do that. So if you can still charge. It is a passive. Is this a dead earlier, actually? Uh, let's see. Plus one power for Archer shoots... Lackey. Archer, got Archer, got shoots the shield off. Shoots the shield off. The and Archer does one. Yeah, the Lackey. With this the is burn? A dead with the burn, yeah, it's a dead earlier. I don't think you need the burn, right? You do, because, well, uh, let's see, War Garcher two. shoots the shield off, and then Wormscale mails armor. Yeah. So you do have to shield, use the burn. Shield is gone, she has five health. Archer shoots four. Oh, okay. I guess if Hellbear just hits really at this point, yeah, she is dead. Super Actually, you actually could have point, yeah, so now it's just the shield bearer. Yeah, War Grider takes care of the shield bearer. Yeah. I think, I think everything, this is... everything just dogpiles into Aurelia now. I think this is a pretty clean kill this round, ultimately. Sure shoots off the shield. Yep. Yeah. Right, she's getting to take care of that. And then Hellbear just hits her and she dies. He could just not attack and just play with them for could just, four, could just four goof, round. He could just goof guaranteed kill this round. I, I mean, if you think about it, Aurelia can't even hit... Aurelia can't hit the Hellbear either. Very... What? Four. What? What is Maybe this? Maybe he... <laughs> he just really want... <laughs> Argog to kill him or something. I don't know. Oh, Solar Aegis. Yes. He's going out with a bang. Solar Aegis. Look, if he's going down, he is going to make it as annoying as possible for his opponent. Oh, man, I was going to say, really, can take the middle now. Honestly? Honestly? Hear me <laughs> out, right? Just full skip. You don't care. It doesn't matter what Kira does here. Really, you uh, just can she does not have the health or damage to kill Elder. 
don't, as long as hell don't, no, 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 don't drag this out. <laughs> oh, you psychopath. He, he really wanted our guy in the middle, I guess. I want to go make a sandwich. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Aurelia's okay. That's a concede. Yeah, yeah, that's no. a concede. We got it. That was a really fun game. I loved how aggressive Gath got right out of the gate, jamming straight back into the back line. Uh, there were some options potentially for Care to make a comeback, maybe by counterattacking with his own Aurelia and Angel, and having you know both armies just trade back I line. I think that might have been the correct option to just accept. Okay, Argog's in too good of a position. Yep. I think I need to just accept my losses, kill as much of Gath's units as I can, and then till and then eventually get to a spot to where I can deal with Argog. But hey, it's I mean, Blitz. Live and learn, try new things. And speaking of trying new things, if you want to take Legacy's Allure for a spin yourself, pop on over to the Discord and say hello. One of our lovely community members will be happy to show you the game. I've been Speed Robo, and he's been Patrick, and we'll see you later.